Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It's an odd realisation, but the current political mess that Britain is embroiled in, regardless of who you think is responsible, the people responsible, or, I don't know, Lily Allen, um, has a lot to do with London centrism, uh, with London centric attitudes. It is not good enough to send a microphone to the provinces um, and do a quick canvas of what people think and then return to the capital for studio based discussions. It's just not good enough. Uh, the decline in local news. It's heartbreaking. I, I say that as someone who's, whose dad did the rounds of local newspapers um, uh, before and after working on the Nationals on Fleet Street. It, it, it means that, in many ways, I mean, council corruption was huge as well. Newcastle and, and other cities in the 60s and the 70s, massive stories that would not have broken if it wasn't for local news. But on a much broader picture, it, it, it struck me in the aftermath of, of Brexit and in the run-up to the Scottish referendum, that we kind of talk sometimes as if the world ends within the confines of the M25. And I grew up in Kidderminster. I went to school in Yorkshire, so I, I shouldn't be subject to this. But I really am. I really, really am. And few things illustrate it better than, A, Northern Irish politics, which I thought I cared about. What I, I, I thought I cared about, I thought I understood, I thought I knew, knew a bit about. I did know a bit about. Nothing like enough. And Scottish politics, which masks a very ugly truth at the moment, Scottish politics. Because it's very easy to forget that in 2015, one of the main reasons why Ed Miliband lost was because Scots were othered by the Tories. Uh, all right, that's not fair. Scottish nationalists were othered by the Tories. The, the suggestion was that you couldn't vote Labour because they would end up governing in, in coalition with the Scottish National Party. Do you remember? I've got that right, haven't I? I mean, that was a massive, massive thing. I was doing Newsnight at the time. I remember... I think I was doing Newsnight at the time. I, I remember clocking it, thinking that there is a certain type of commentator stroke politician who is now talking about Scottish people like they were talking about Romanian people six months ago. It was this, oh, we can't trust this lot. Don't like, wouldn't want to live next door to them. And that actually nudged me a bit towards the Scottish independence campaign, although I remain British. And I, and I use that word advisedly. I, I really love the fact that when I go to parts of Scotland that I now know very, very well, don't laugh at me, I'm just being a little bit sentimental. I feel at home. I've got an Irish surname, but I spent a hell of a lot more time in Scotland than I have in Ireland over the years. And, and when I'm in Ireland, um, I, I feel different. But when I'm in Scotland, I feel at home. I go to Edinburgh a lot, uh, often for the festival, which is a slightly unrepresentative experience, but we spend quite a lot of time in North Berwick, a little seaside town, 40 minutes outside. Um, it's beautiful. I know Ghislaine, I probably mispronounced it quite well. Uh, I know Anstruther quite well. I, I mean, these are nice, lovely bits of Scotland. I appreciate I, I'm suffering a little bit from tourist syndrome. But I do feel at home in Scotland. And, and a lot of Scottish heritage, Scottish literature, Scottish philosophy, it feels part of me. You know? David Hume, John Stuart Mill. And, and that's why I don't like the idea of Scottish independence. And yet, I don't like nationalism either, really, to be honest with you. And yet, and yet, and yet, if I was Scottish now, and I'd voted to remain in the European Union, I was looking at, A, the mess that Westminster has made of everything, B, the fact that we were held up as reasons to vote for this mess. Scottish people, Scottish nationalists, the SNP, oh, we can't do that, were held up as... um examples of this and I feel my sort of sympathies switching slightly. The SNP conference is, spring conference is starting tomorrow. Um, Nicola Sturgeon, the First Minister, has been talking this week about the timing of a second independence uh, referendum. Let's talk to the BBC Scotland editor Sarah Smith. She's just interviewed uh, the First Minister. Uh, Sarah, what did she say? Well, I was asking her about why she says she wants an independence referendum in the next two years, when actually that is going to be quite 
difficult. She's always said the fog of Brexit has to clear before Scotland can be asked to make a choice about its future. It's not clear that's necessarily going to have happened in the next couple of years. And there is the problem that Westminster, the Westminster government frankly says no and she needs their position permission in order to have a legal vote. The de facto Deputy Prime Minister David Liddington was in Glasgow yesterday. He was very clear saying this government will not grant uh, the Section 30 order that's required to have a legal referendum. And there's no particular sign of any public clamour for another vote either. That's some of what I put to her when I spoke to her this morning. A majority of Scots do want a referendum. Yes, but only, are, only if you include people who want one not for another 10 years. That's a very no, different... No, thing no, no hold, hold on a little second. We, we're used to hearing from those who oppose independence, politicians who oppose independence, that the majority of people don't want a referendum. This poll today shows that that is absolutely not the case. Yes, there are differences of opinion on timing. My job is to set out to people why I think there will be real damage done to Scotland if we wait too long. So here's her problem. If there was really clear and sustained demand from the electorate in Scotland to have another referendum, it would put huge pressure on Westminster to say that they would allow it. It would be quite difficult for them to continue to say there cannot be another vote. But without that pressure, and there's little evidence of it now, they probably can maintain this position of saying we simply will not let you go ahead. So that could be a problem for Nicola Sturgeon. Then again, it might not upset her too much because there's no particular evidence from opinion polling that she would win a referendum if she rushed into it too quickly. Whereas you can see she's starting to marshal the arguments to build a much longer game, telling the Scottish electorate that the status quo doesn't work, that there's a democratic deficit in Scotland, and she might ultimately persuade them. That means independence is the answer. Sarah Smith, thank you very much. Angus, is this a bit of a non-announcement? It feels a bit like a damp squib. I mean, if you're an SNP supporter and you're desperate for that referendum and you hear we'll have one in the next two years once Brexit has been resolved, if there's consistently more support that can be shown for it, well, that, that could be never. Uh, no. Um, well, th I think there's, an, there's a hierarchy of priorities in this. Firstly, I think it's worth stating that the SNP was elected into government on a mandate of holding a referendum in the circumstances such as Scotland being taken out of the European Union against its will. So there was a mandate from a Scottish Parliament election. Then there was a mandate from a Westminster election when a majority of MPs returned from Scotland were elected on such a manifesto. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third leg to the, the mandate, which is that the Scottish Parliament has voted for that to be the case. Now, what I'm quite interested in sitting in a studio in London mm. is to take the temperature off mm. fellow panellists as to whether it is reasonable and democratic if a party is elected into government with a mandate repeatedly from the electorate. How many elections does it actually need to take before decision makers in this city acknowledge that if this United Kingdom is a family of nations and we respect one another and of course you should be allowed to determine your own future, how many times can we listen to UK government ministers saying, no, I'm really sorry, we're too busy, we know you've voted in favour right. of a party to government to be able to hold such a referendum, but you're not having it. What kind of a United Kingdom is that? And this would be in the next two years for you, as Nicola Sturgeon has said. Well, what she has said is that um, legislation is going to be introduced into the Scottish Parliament that will allow that to take place. Because, right. of course, we want to hold a referendum with the agreement of the UK government. Democrats surely would agree that well, if, if, if a government is elected with a mandate to hold such a thing, then it should be able to do so. Well, let's test it, as you said, with the panel. What do you think? Well, obviously, um, the, the Green Party in Scotland is a separate party from the Green Party of England and Wales, which I'm co-leader of. Uh, they campaigned for uh, independence in the 2014 uh, referendum. Um, and I think, you, you know, you make a good point. Of course, it's for the people of Scotland to decide their fate as a nation. Um, and the question of the EU, you know, it was used as a massive plank of the no campaign, that this is how Scotland gets to stay in the EU. That situation may be about to change, and I think it is right that Scotland gets to revisit it. One thing that, that Nicola Sturgeon has talked about is holding citizens' assemblies mm. um, to discuss <laughs> this, and, and I am hugely in favour of that. You're hugely when in favour. you've got well, difficult yeah, yeah. issues, getting representative samples you know, of people together <laughs> to properly discuss the issue in a, in a calm and deliberative way is a very good way to get I through to a I guess you're not keen on process. citizens' assemblies, I, I, but... I'm not keen. Let's address uh, yes, Angus's Angus. central point. You understandably ask how many elections is it going to take? Mm. Well, if leave, leave supporters are watching this, they might say, how many elections does it take to actually have a Brexit? But coming back to yourself, you want to gauge the, the, the mood of this room. Very briefly, 
I would much rather you stay in the United Kingdom, but clearly it's getting fractured. If you feel you must, it is like a bad marriage, which sadly I've endured. Is sometimes you have to take the decision and you move off. But very much, in a sentence, as as Joe said, you're taking the move. I present this this radio show that is a national station, and I asked people to ring in, and I was, and I'm not trying to score a cheap point here. I was struck. Of course, some Scottish folk walked in and said yes, one. The majority said no, and they pointed to enormous issues in Scotland. Lack of teachers, lack of police officers, rats in schools and schools being closed. I wonder if this is just a, I know you're no longer there, but whether it's a convenient sideshow. No, I, I, um, just before I get to get sorry, John, I want Joe, to go here, Sophie, because we're testing the temperature of the room. Well, uh, Scotland's obviously the home of, uh, home of Adam Smith, so we, we'd like you to stay. <laughs> that wasn't the question. My no. question is whether, as Democrats, which I think we all are, whether we uh, acknowledge that if a government is elected on a mandate that they should be able to hold a referendum, that that should be respected. Has support, simple, has support changed enough, Sophie? It's um, not about changing. Well, from what, what I've been reading, there is de declining support for a second referendum. I think I was reading yesterday about a fifth of Scottish voters support um, Sturgeon's demand this week for a second independence referendum within two years. Yeah, if you have a look at the number of polls, so there, that was a poll committed um, that was uh, commissioned by Scotland Union, the pro-union pro uh, organisation, uh, Progress Scotland, my own polling organisation, using the same um, polling company, uh, found that if you, you ask people whether there should be a second independence referendum, the total was 61%. Will there be an independence referendum within the next five years with 65%? And will Scotland become an independent country with 63%? Now, whether we like it or not, that is not actually the issue at play here. It is, what is the state of the United Kingdom, obviously massively distracted by Brexit, and totally ignoring the fact that two out of the four nations of the United Kingdom voted to remain in the EU? All right, we know that. On the question uh, that Nick posed to you, there are other issues yep. that voters in Scotland indicate they are fed up yeah. with the SNP not well, dealing with well that's not true uh, really? and if, well if that were the case then of course the SNP would be terribly doing terribly badly in the in the polls the poll that you mentioned there shows the SNP on its highest level of support this year 41 41 percent mm. with a higher level of support than the Labour oh, and right. Conservative parties combined so but it has if, things, down. Are, if yeah. things are going so badly for the SNP they wouldn't be 19 points ahead of the competition all right well we'll leave you with that uh, positive number um, at the end now, the Scottish National Party leader, Nicola Sturgeon, has set out after a long delay her preferred timescale for a second independence referendum. She declared the people of Scotland should be offered a choice between Brexit and independence before the next Scottish parliamentary elections in two years' time. But tomorrow, the party's annual conference will focus on the key question of currency, which was so crucial to the last independence vote. Our Scotland correspondent, Kieran Jenkins, talked to Ms Sturgeon earlier today. Now you say that polling evidence suggests a majority in Scotland want a choice on independence. They don't necessarily want it on the time scale that you're putting forward, though, do they, within two years? There's a difference of opinion on timing, absolutely, but uh, it's only a minority who don't want a referendum at all. So my job as First Minister is to set out why I think it is uh, certainly not right to have it straight away, but right to have it within a time frame that gives us the option of avoiding the worst of the damage that Brexit will do. Almost all the polls overwhelmingly show more support for no than for yes, don't they? You recognise that? I, I, reckon, I, I recognise that those of us who support independence have still got work to do to make that case and to win that case. But, you know, we started out uh, in advance of the 2014 referendum with support for independence around 30% and ended up at 45%. So going into uh, another referendum with support for independence at 46, 47, 48%, which is where polls uh, hover around, I think is a pretty good starting point. You're also setting out a new plan for the current scene. Now want a new Scottish currency after independence. There's been some confusion about how the euro would fit into that picture. The opposition is that Scotland would have to commit to join the euro but wouldn't necessarily ever intend to do so. Is that right? Well Channel 4 have, uh, I think with the greatest respect, got this slightly wrong in the recent past. Uh, there is, I mean, you only have to look at countries already within the European Union. Sweden, which joined the European Union after the commitment to be in the euro was in place and is not in the euro, has no intentions of joining the euro and the European Union has no intentions of trying to force them into the euro. Jean-Claude Juncker is on record as saying it's not the business of the EU to force any country into the euro. So this argument that Scotland would somehow have to be in the euro simply doesn't bear up under any scrutiny. You're quite right. Sweden isn't in the euro and shows no intention of joining anytime soon, but they have committed to joining the euro. 
as have the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria and Croatia. None of them in the Euro, they've all committed but, but to the joining is, the Euro. So just, let me, just for clarity, so that people understand, you would commit to joining the Euro, but you have no intention of actually doing so. Well, we would have discussions with the European Union about the basis of an independent Scotland's membership, but I think but what those people, are the rules, First well, Minister. But I think what people have a right to know is, could Scotland be forced to go into the euro and that's the fundamental point none of these countries that you have just read out to me there there is absolutely no suggestion by anybody that if they don't want to go into the euro that anybody will force absolutely. them into the euro absolutely and bulgaria and have actually told us that they could stay out of the euro indefinitely well, isn't that the key point but they've also said they're committed to joining the euro well, but, which is the rules for membership but, but you have demonstrated that it doesn't mean very much if countries say, well, we've committed to something, but everybody knows that there's no uh, way of forcing us to do it. Your proposal for the currency would involve using the pound but not having control over monetary policy. Now, if people have concerns about that, could you reassure them by explaining which other countries currently do something a bit like that? There are a range of different uh, currency options in use by different countries. Many countries have their own currency. Many countries are in a currency union. Now, you're going to ask me, to, to name a country that is uh, proposing exactly what Scotland is, but there aren't. Scotland is in a unique circumstance here. We have the pound as our currency already, and we're proposing to continue to use it. There are no obvious examples of countries in that particular situation. So it's unprecedented. Well, Scot the pound is our currency. We can choose to use it. Currently, countries using another currency without control of a monetary policy. You know what they are. Ecuador, yeah, but, but they are not. Liechtenstein. But, Montenegro, but, but that, is, that is a facile argument because these are countries using another country's currency. Scotland wouldn't be using another country's currency. We'd be using our own currency. The pound is our currency. But you wouldn't have already. control of a monetary policy. Which is why the proposition that my party will debate at our conference tomorrow is looking at the conditions and the, the process that we would put in place to move when the time is right to an independent currency. But is your currency proposal a risk? I don't think the proposition we're putting forward is a risk because we're putting forward clear tests that would be informed by independent assessments that would allow us to make judgments and move in a direction when the time was right and we'd done the preparatory work. Thank you very much. Well, we may be getting a bit ahead of ourselves here because David Liddington, the de facto Deputy Prime Minister, was here in Glasgow yesterday, again insisting the UK government wouldn't allow another independence referendum. Nicola Sturgeon says she needs that consent. If the UK government keeps saying no, it's hard to see how that referendum will happen. But if and when it does, this currency question will be right at the heart of it, as it was in 2014. You heard there that the SNP conference tomorrow in Edinburgh will be looking to approve this proposal for an independent Scottish currency after independence. You also heard how important this question about the euro could be potentially because it muddies the waters possibly and it brings into play another currency. That is not the question that Nicola Sturgeon wants to talk about. That's not the story she wants to tell. She wants to control the narrative on the currency this time and for the SNP that process starts right now. Thanks very much Kieran. I don't think I'd ever be passionately in favour of um Scottish independence because I want to carry on feeling at home and also you know there are issues would we have to put up borders we would you know we'd have to have a hard border if Brexit carries on and Scotland goes a different route via future referendums I mean, you think this is confusing you think the British border in Ireland is problematical how the hell would we cope with a with a border between England and Scotland if there were different trade regulatory frameworks in place there so when Nicola Sturgeon said yesterday that she wants to hold a second referendum on Scottish independence by 2021, if Brexit goes ahead, was she actually just doing some quite clever campaigning to stop Brexit? Or do you feel, and I don't care where you are in the country, obviously if you have a vote in a Scottish independence referendum, your position is more powerful and important than anybody else's, mine included, but... I felt, I know this will sound odd, I, 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 I thought I should have been able to have a vote in that, in that Scottish independence referendum. I really did. I thought I should have been able to have a vote because it's a bit like, it's a bit, oh, I'm going to sound patronising now, it's a bit like a child leaving home without the parents being asked. But that's patronising and paternalistic. Westminster is not the parent. England is not the parent of Scotland. But it... God, I'm making a right old mess of this attempt, aren't I, to build bridges between the London-centric media and the people of Scotland. But throw me a bone. 
has your needle nudged? It's a question I ask every day about various subjects. But when you look at Brexit, and I don't want to focus exclusively on Brexit, but it is a crucial part of what Nicola Sturgeon said yesterday. Legislation for another vote. If I suppose the holy grail caller at the moment would be the Remain campaigner, the, the, the person who wanted Scotland to remain part of the United Kingdom um, back in the last referendum in 2014, okay, who as a result of events since, which will inevitably include a fat slice of Brexit related events, would now vote the other way. And I honestly don't know. This is, this is why I'm really looking forward to your calls, because hand on heart, I don't know if that makes as much sense to you as it does at first glance to me. You also end up prioritising things, which is the same experience that many Northern Irish people are going through at the moment. Which union is more important? The union with England and Wales or the union with the rest of Europe? Because you do, in many ways, no longer have the opportunity to have both. Scotland was previously part of this union and part of that union. It voted to remain part of both unions. <laughs> but it's been dragged out of the big union by the people that are its partners in the little union. That all makes sense, doesn't it? I use the word union a bit too often. So I just want to know whether events since 2014, which include a couple of general, three general elections, isn't it? And more importantly, a massive um, Brexit vote, have changed your views on A... Scottish independence, and B, perhaps Nicola Sturgeon. That's the picture I was thinking of, uh, the picture of Alex Salmond with Ed Miliband depicted as being in his top pocket. So very much the Conservative Party were depicting Ed Miliband as being in the pocket of the then, or the former Scottish National Party leader, Alex Salmond. Um, uh, and and that, that upset me slightly, because again it seemed to be saying we can't trust our neighbours. It was an early indication, actually, that 2015 election, arguably, of, of how the referendum would go. If you whisper in people's ears, the flipping Cameron government, honestly, using the same tactics to get into Downing Street that Leavers then used to get out of the European Union. Whisper in there, you can't trust the Scots. You can't trust the Scots. Well, I do. But I don't really like nationalism. I'm increasingly persuaded that... Unity, cooperation, supranational regulatory frameworks, rules-based systems, objective baselines by which we all have to abide while individual governments and systems are allowed to improve upon the situation to their heart's content, but they're never allowed to go below that baseline on things like workers' rights or, or, or health and safety legislation. I increasingly, much more than I was before Brexit, can't see the downside to any of this stuff. And when, when people start banging up echoing some of the words of Adolf Hitler about nation-states being the way forward, I get quite frightened about the way things are going domestically. So if I was Scottish, what would I want to do? Would I actually feel my own Scottish nationalism being enhanced by a desire to stay in the broader union? So it's not nationalism in a lazy sense of the word. Scottish nationalism in the context of the European Union is probably something we should have paid a hell of a lot more attention to sooner. Because what it does is, is highlight that huge swathes of Scotland felt that independence could be achieved within the European Union. And all the shysters and the charlatans who were punting Brexit kept telling us that we weren't independent somehow. Crikey. We should have looked at a lot more through the lens of Scottish politics than we did. But better late than never, eh? I've got a call from Aberdeen and a call from Edinburgh. Where else will my calls come from in the course of the next half an hour? The question is very simple. Has your needle nudged? And I, I'm, I'm going to warn you now, that's a question I'm going to be asking a lot in the coming months because that is the thing that interests me most about everything we do every single day. What actually makes you change your mind? What actually makes you shift your position? Not necessarily to recognise wrongness in the past or to uh, beg for forgiveness, but actually when the facts change, you change your mind. And my goodness me, Brexit is a massive change in fact of what union means between Scotland and the rest of the currently, but not for long, United Kingdom. If you're feeling a little low, fear not. Mystery Hour is on the way at 12. Your weekly opportunity to... Well, I think it's fair to say we have a bit of a giggle, don't we? No? 
11.34 is the time. Um, Scottish politics, Scottish independence, has your needle nudged? And it could, of course, have nudged in the opposite direction. What's happened since 2014 that has shifted you from wanting to be independent from Westminster? Is that the right way of phrasing it? To no longer wanting to be independent from Westminster? Fraser's in Aberdeen. Fraser, what would you like to say? I, yeah, no, I, I voted for Scottish independence in 2014. Yes. Um, having worked, having lost my job in the oil and gas industry yeah. twice in six months in, in 2015, 2016. I ended up working in London, travelling back and forth on a weekly basis, if yeah. not elsewhere around the world. And having seen what's happened in Scotland in the last couple of years to education, what the government spending and what the SNP are doing in Scotland, increasing the taxes to, to people like myself. Um, now we're just... I, I want well. I want them one to respect the vote of the last referendum. It was we were told at the time it's a once in a generation thing by Alex Hammond. Yeah, again. Like, I, the, the, however, I, I the, the it's a bit like the Brexit thing being once in a generation or once in a lifetime. When the pitch, the rules, when everything changes and it turns out one side cheated, then we have to change our views on that and. Voting for Scottish independence when you're both members of the European Union versus being held to that vote when only one part of it wants to be uh, well, out one of, of one of the main re one of the, the strong reasons that I don't want to vote for an independent Scotland again yes. is their push to join the EU. But I think a small vote, you know, if they don't want if, if they want to be an independent nation, you want to be independent. If you're part of the EU and part of an even bigger union than the UK. But then even smaller voice, what is the point? Well, That's because, I mean, the short answer to that, Fraser, would be that the... Uh, I mean, devolution from from Westminster and uh, uh, cooperation in the European Parliament are two completely different propositions. So, I mean, Scotland, you yeah. voted to be independent while you were a member of the European Union. And then there's no, there's no gun. There was no. no but this is the bit I just don't understand. I'm missing something because you, you, you're saying we wouldn't be independent if we were in the European Union. But you voted to be independent when you thought you would be staying in the European Union. So it was worth something well, then. I, I, I didn't. I didn't look into the, the all, all the details of Scottish independence at the time. And I think the whole. Brexit so what? 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 What, what would you describe as being surrendered in the context of independence by European Union membership? That's bigger than being surrendered by a United I mean, Kingdom Union. I mean, I think part of, being part of the UK, you've, you've certainly got a strong voice in, in decisions that are made. There is devolution. I mean, devolution's made quite a difference in Scotland. I mean, we still get free healthcare. We get our free prescription, which don't get in England, which is a great advantage to many people. Well, this is kind of what I'm confused by, because I, I've learnt a lot about the difference in health and, and legal provisions in Scotland. It's one of the things yeah. that reminded me that all I, these I claims... completely different. And, uh, precisely. It's one of the things that reminded me how ridiculous it was for Brexiters to claim that we all have to follow rules from, from Brussels. You can just hop over the border into Scotland to see completely different rules being enacted by completely different governments. So that's why I'm confused about what you've said about independence. Um, oh, you've got me there. Well, I always do with people who say that they're not independent because they're in the European Union. I'm getting bored of it, Fraser. <laughs> nothing, pers oh, no, nothing personal, no, 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 mate. No, no. Nothing personal. But, it, I mean, it's so obviously not true. you literally got different rules on prescriptions. You've got different rules in schools. You've got different rules in courts. You've got different rules in housing. You've got different taxes. And you claim that we're somehow surrendering our independence to Brussels. While we're in the European Union, two members of the same United Kingdom have different rules and laws in very, very many different areas. So how can anybody claim that we're, we're, we're having to follow... The rules of Brussels. Go on, have another go, Fraser. No, the Europe, the Europe, the European courts can't supersede decisions made in Scottish courts as well as English courts. Well, so, no, the European Court of Justice presides over things upon which we have collectively agreed to abide as, as a union. So people can't take things beyond the Scottish court? In, in certain areas that are governed by, areas. The, you're, you're by the Human Rights Act or by trade disagreements, then of course they can, because you need to have somebody who is going to set your case against another country's case. You have to have a okay. supranational court in order to, do, to deal with international disputes. Well, I, I certainly won't be voting for independent <laughs> Scotland if they do have a second referendum. <laughs> And I look forward to finding out why. Heather is in Edinburgh. Heather, what would you like to say? Uh, well, I'm kind of the opposite. I moved here in 2014 and got a vote in the Remain, uh, the last independence referendum. And um, 
Now I would go the other, other way and would go for independence. Why? Uh, because it feels like we're two separate countries. Does it? More so than it did in 2014? Well, yeah, I used to think that I didn't want to leave, like, my... Because I'm from the northwest, so I didn't want to leave, like, my northern brothers and sisters behind to deal with Tory austerity measures. And <laughs> we could always fight them together. And then you all go to Brexit, and it's like, OK, never mind, leave you. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah, um, well, I get that up to a point, although... I don't recognise my homeland anymore. It's well, like, it was 52, 48. The polling now is, is, is uh, it's about 58... <laughs> 42, isn't it? Or it's gone even higher. So, I mean, we're still here waving at you and you're just not seeing us. Uh, some of the, the areas where we moved from specifically were a lot higher than that. More oh, I see what you mean. Percent. Okay, yes. Um, okay, well, again, you know, oh, you're taking your ball home, in other words. Well, it's, we were made lots of promises after the 2014 referendum and it was, you know, we're going to listen to your voice more and you are going to be an equal partner. I'm hearing and that a lot. through the Brexit nego negotiations, not a whiff of it. I'm hearing that a lot. Just, we I'm hearing that a lot. And now, now you're hearing the Prime Minister in this country talk about the will of the people without adding the brackets, not you people, not the Scottish people, not the Northern oh, Irish the people. Irish. Not the London people, not, not, I mean, which people? All the other people. Uh, well, but, you know, can't you try and do something that at least acknowledges our existence? So you'd vote for Scottish independence now, despite being English by birth? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to go round door to door and tell people I'm English and I'm for independence. So, uh, you know. They might chuck you English out. should be too. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I hope. It's 11.41. Pavis is in Aberdeen. Pavis, what would you like to say? Uh, good morning from tropical. Uh, this is lovely up here. Blue skies. <laughs> Glad to Very hear nice. it. Glad yeah, to hear it. I don't even have any windows in this studio anymore. It's like a rabbit hut. No, even rabbit hutches have windows. Carry on. I, I'm That's sorry. Right. <laughs> um, I, um, I... Oh, and there goes the phone line. Pavis, we'll try and fix that. Obviously, Aberdeen's a very long way away. It's defying our technology, our telephonic technology. George is in Aberfoyle. What do you reckon, Morning, George? James. Hello, George. Morning, James, yes. Um, first of all, I just want to say I'm a massive fan. I'm not expecting that uh, to um, enable you to go easy on me, but I'm really pleased that you're, you're turning your forensic microscope onto the Scottish. <laughs> no, the I might be forensic, mate, but it needs a lot, of, a lot of weight training before I can bring anything like what I can bring to Brexit to the Scottish political but, landscape. Uh, uh, anything is welcome, because once you, you just scratch beneath the surface um, here, then you expose a whole load of, um, I would say, parallels with the, the, the Brexit chaos. Um, I wanted to slightly challenge you a little bit yes, on your um, notion of, of uh, the word union. Mm. Um, and the, you know, there's, there's obviously some people. Uh, well, cards on the table. I'm a I'm a Scottish independent supporter who wants to be in the EU. Yes. Um, I think and, you might uh, be the position that is beginning to make the most sense to me. Well, it is. And some people will say, well, what's the point of coming out of one union to stay in another? Well, I think nothing... Has yeah, that's people like Fraser. When you ask them one... Yes, no yes. no offence to Fraser, but when you ask them one fairly straightforward question, that position falls apart very quickly. Well, well, well it does. The, 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 there's nothing has ex exposed um, the lack of union more than the whole Brexit chaos. And there's one word for me that summarises the difference between the EU and the UK, and it's the word veto. Yes. Every member has a veto. They sit no matter how big or small, they sit at the table. The smallest uh, countries, you know, San Marino, you know, whatever yes. small country sits at the table and has an equal power of veto to Germany or France or the UK. Where is the power of veto for Scotland? It's, it just simply doesn't exist. So I think using the word union is, is entirely a fallacy now within the UK. You know, we're, we're still getting uh, Theresa May turning around and saying, you know, when there's a request for a, a, a Section 30, which is permission to hold another election, referendum. No, you can't. Now is not the time. Now, one of the great pillars of the Brexiteers was, you know, what... Not allowed to use that word on here, George. Uh, oh, Brexiter. Sorry? Brexiter, please. So they're, not, Brexiter, they're, not, they're, not, they're not They're not. the heirs of D'Artagnan, mate. They're, 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 <laughs> they're plums. Carry on. Apologies. Yes. Well, well, yes, I have a number of choice words I'd rather <laughs> use for them, but uh, yeah, that was the first one I came to, to, to mind. <laughs> so, um, basically, this, uh, this idea that we're in a union, it, it, it's been exposed for what it is. That there is no union. We're being dragged along. In fact, we've been dragged down by what, in my opinion, was a, a vote for English independence. 
And uh, ironically, I think there is a case where if there was actually a, a, a vote presented to the, the people of England to go independent from the UK, I think they would take it. Mm. I think it would actually result in the breakup of the UK because I think that's the direction England's going in. And, you know, good luck to England. Oh, but mate, but I don't... I, I, just, I, know, I hear you, I know, and, and you're making intellectual listen, we, sense, but this is oddly where I get a vague idea of what it's like to be a Brexiter is that I want my emotions to trump your... Well, not facts, actually, but your argument. My feelings are, are that I want to still think that Scotland I, is part of my I, home well, country. I understand. I understand that, and, and of course you would always be welcome. And I think <laughs> no, you can't just have, it's not me personally, mate. <laughs> we won't stop you at the border. No, what, I, know. There, I, think actually, I might be seeking asylum, you, George, if things carry on the way but, they're going. But what, what you say is interesting because the attitudes towards immigration mm. in Scotland and England generally are, are black and white. Um, you know, they're, they're night and day. Um, so, you know, we, we would still remain neighbours. We would be trading neighbours. The only difference would be that we wouldn't have West Westminster, Westminster telling us how to run our country. Um, it's, yeah. it's basically as simple as that. And the, the idea also, just to, again to challenge the, the use of the word nationalism. Yes, um, if you would. I would urge you, please, next time there is a big independence rally in Scotland, I think there's one in the 4th of May in Glasgow, 100,000 plus people, come along and observe it. You will see civic nationalism at its civic, very best. Yes. The, the last one we went on a march, my mum, she's 75, my partner, who's a social worker, her mum, who's uh, retired in her late 60s. It is, it is a glorious thing to see, James, and uh, believe me, the notion of blood and soil nationalism in Scotland does not exist. I this hear you. Civic That's nationalism a crucial point. It's amazing best. how these words get corrupted, isn't it? You're, you're yes. absolutely... I got, in fact, when I mentioned that in the context of Hitler, I got a text saying, um, I love nationalism, Hitler was right, spelt with a W, George, which I thought was quite <laughs> relevant. Hitler right. was right with a W. Um, can I ask you a quick question? And I, 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 sure. This is an illustration, I think, of my own ignorance. Well, it definitely oh. is. What does sure. yun mean? Why double O-N? What, what does that, what's that a sort of... I, a yun, it's, a, it's another word for a unionist. Right. Um, but I think it's... it's but it's uh, a pejorative, pejorative term, term, is it? Yes, absolutely. Right, OK. Well, because, because as na Scottish nationalists, the, the word nationalism is used to, to beat us around the head and it's association, you know, uh, Scottish Nazis and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, we, we, we have to get, kind of bring something back. Um, and for some reason, British nationalism isn't seen for what it is. Yes. But Scottish nationalism is very much put into that kind of Hitler category. But, yeah, no, uh, but you want so independence but, but, but uh, only from from a from an uncaring an uncaring Westminster. I'm late for the break. I want to ask you one more question, which is a sure. question I'd like to ask prominent pro still people who are still prominently pro-Brexit when they do sometimes, some of them, by no means all, but some of them when they talk about nationalism and nation states are clearly echoing some very, very evil movements from the past. Absolutely. And I'd like to say, so what you're saying is you'd rather, as, as a very right-wing Brexiter, you'd rather Jeremy Corbyn was in charge without us being in the EU than us being in the EU simply because Jeremy Corbyn is English. When you talk about it, I do find myself wondering, you'd rather have a Scot in charge in Edinburgh or in, 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 um, uh, in Scotland? In Hollywood, yes. In Hollywood. Uh, e even if they were rubbish, you'd rather have a Scot in charge oh, in yes. Scotland than be part yes. of a union with a better government and a better calibre of politician in London. Yes, because right. the next election that comes around in Scotland would you know, we have the opportunity to change. I mean, the, the, the political slate in Scotland, uh, uh, the, the notion of that, the day after independence, oh, really gets good. me excited because we'd, we'd have a, a whole... We'd, we'd be wiping the slate clean and starting from afresh with every political party mm. being voted in to act on issues specific only to Scotland. And if that means that sometimes you get a specifically Scottish government that is doing things you don't approve of, you just wait for the next election to come around and cross your God, fingers. James, I would bite your course. hand off for that. I hear you, George. I hear you. And, and of course, it, because the interference from Westminster to Scotland is so clear to track the difference between independence in the context of Brexit, which is a largely meaningless or misunderstood phrase, and independence in the context of Scotland becomes clear the difference is immense are two completely different things although the same word is used to apply to both right? independence and nationalism completely different meanings both filed under the same word no wonder we all get so confused um a bit weird this uh, sam coates of the times points out uh, that liam fox appears to 
have legitimised people who, who reject the current scientific consensus on the causes of climate change. Whether or not individuals accept the current scientific consensus on the causes of climate change, it is sensible for everyone to use finite resources in a responsible way. Um, but as Sam Coates in the Times points out, that's been released by the Department of Trade and Industry uh, in a press release. And not only did he say it, but they put it out in a press release. And, and I, I don't know whether something odd or sinister or weird is happening there, but there we are, Liam Fox essentially uh, saying, yeah, of course we should pay attention to people who disagree with the science um, in the context of climate change, not in the context of MMR. But we're talking about Scottish politics today, and Mark is in... In fact, every caller on the screen today is from Scotland, which is lovely, particularly Aberdeen, overrepresented in Aberdeen. Are there no decent radio stations in Aberdeen, Mark? Um, nothing as good as RBC, I'm afraid. James. There you go. No, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he gets a car sticker. <laughs> what do you want to say, Mark? Yeah, can I just make a couple of points of before I tell you what I feel? Um, the, 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 what you're struggling with is the concept of Scotland becoming independent yes. from England and then going into the EU. The way I rationalise that, the EU is a trading block, okay? Yes. It exists so that goods, services, people and capital can move within the EU as unhindered as possible, right? There's no dichotomy with an independent Scotland. I, I don't think there is either. The I don't, no, I don't yeah. think there is. It was more. It was more the fellow Fraser who rang in from from yeah. the same town as you, the same city as yeah. you, that, that was yeah. trying to argue yeah. that. But I, I don't think it went well yeah. for him. It, no, it's the unionist argument. Why right. do you want to come out of the union and then go back into the EU? Oh, it's simple. Shit. Scotland. So that's why I got some rude messages about him. And this word <laughs> "un" is used as a pejorative because this yeah. is a tactic that's yeah. employed, which, like yeah. most of these anti-EU tactics yeah. falls apart the minute yeah. you pull a thread. It's just there's not enough thread yeah. pulling going on. It is, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I and mean, Scotland as a country exports a huge amount. In fact, the, the UK's largest food export to the EU is Scottish whisky, you know? So it's absolutely the most sensible thing in the world to want to become or to want to be part of the, the largest and richest trading bloc in the world. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. It's yeah. dichotomy. And, and that, that, that is the argument that is quite often used, as I, I say, see. by the union. So it's, the an, it's an argument in bad faith. It's a, it's, it's, it's yeah, a, exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, it's clutching its straws. And your personal yeah, positions? But, well, I mean, I was a very reluctant um, no voter in 2014. Uh, my heart said, yes, uh, let's become independent. Mm. But my head said, no, we're better off where we are. Okay. Based on the promises, what's swung it was the promises, including from David Cameron, yeah. if you want to remain safe in the EU, you should remain safe, you should remain part of the UK. So yeah. they said, no, of course, I'm absolutely opposite now. My, my, heart, my heart and head now say, yes, we should become independent. And I will be voting for Scotland to become independent. The next time we have the referendum, I believe, I mean, and of course, what man became available um, in the public realm recently was the Macron report which was from the 1970s and was um, hidden. It was a, a, a report on how Scotland went to as an independent country. And the, the line from that, that always sticks in my head, is that Scotland as a country is a country with an embarrassment of natural resources, OK? We have a well-defined border. We have a well-educated English-speaking population, motivated. Uh, we have exports, good exports, um, good services, you know, we would be, I think the figure is something like the fifth richest economy in the world. I'm not across a, this, which is a, hmm? another mark of the failure of London-based media to be yeah. up to speed on everything. I, I'm, I'm not across this. So, I mean, even without that actually weighing down on one side of the argument, yeah. this, this notion that you will be... You'll be weakened by Brexit. The whole of the United well, Kingdom will be weakened by Brexit, but, but your well, lot didn't yeah. actually ask for it. Our lot did. There's no, no two ways about it. Of course, Scotland voted 68% remain, 32% leave in Brexit. We voted 68% to remain in Europe, and yet we're still being dragged out of Europe. Just can't, you can't really justify that. And, and I mean, this, I find talk of the will of the people fatuous when it's a 51 point something versus 40 eight point something, but the numbers you describe, that really is the will of the people. And, and it's been completely ignored because you're Scottish. I, there's no other way of dressing that up, I don't think. And we're going to run out of time before anyone can correct me. But why is, why is, my, why is my vote being ignored? Because you're Scottish. It doesn't matter. I'm in London. It's the capital city of England. Why is my vote being ignored? Well, because the majority of England voted differently from you. OK, I, I can just about deal with that, mathematically at least. Why is, why is Mark's vote being ignored? Because he's Scottish. No wonder he's nudging closer, or has nudged entirely over to the 
independence side. And, and you know, I'll tell you something else, my Scottish friends. When you talk about having voted yes and no, most of us don't know what that means in the country, because we're thinking in terms of leave and remain. So even that is an illustration of how badly you were let down by the... Um, by the, oh, how badly the British media has let down the British people in coverage of issues that are relevant to all of us, but which we have somehow allowed to be focused only on those on, on this side of the border. Stephen's in Glasgow with the last word on this. What do you want to say, Stephen? Uh, hi there. Uh, I, uh, in the first independence referendum, uh, vote, voted to stay as part of the, of the UK. I love... So that was yes. Uh, that was... Uh, no to oh, no. <laughs> no to independence. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get it right one way or another. I hope I got it right way around anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I voted to remain in the UK. Uh, love it. Uh, I've lived and worked in England uh, for several years, uh, and feel as much as you do at home in Scotland. I feel that way about being in England. Yes. And I would not want to to damage that. In but any it is way just a feeling, isn't it? Yeah, and, that, and that's it. But um, but if we are taken, if Brexit goes ahead, if we are taken out, um, I would have to. And and to me, it would become an issue rather of the, rather than the heart, because my heart says I love being British and and being part of Britain. But my head would say that European is is more important to me, uh, and more important to the Scottish people. So I would I would choose uh, being part of the European Union and it's, over it... part of. This union that it, I love so much. Because it's facts, kind of breaks it, my heart. it's facts over feelings, really. Yeah, exactly. And, and it does break my heart. Well, I can hear it does, and I'm glad it does in a way. I and mean, I wouldn't wish heartbreak on anybody, but it's, it's nice to feel reflected. It's nice to see somebody Scottish feeling how I feel. <laughs> um, you feel about England like I feel about Scotland. I do think we're the majority. I do think the massive majority of people, given the right information and given the truth, would much rather live together in peace and harmony. But we're living in an era where these wedges, uh, whether you're talking about MMR, whether you're talking about Scottish independence, whether you're talking about climate change, whether you're talking about Brexit, wedges, wedges, wedges everywhere. So many wedges, I haven't seen so many wedges since prep school.